Hi, I'm Daniel Oliver. I'm uh, the lead for Bristol and Bath Social Enterprise Network, at least for the next few weeks. So I suppose we're part of this event, because we're opening up to a wider audience and a wider group of people to be part of deciding what the network's about, how we address needs, and also how we take it forward. Um, this evening's been amazing because what I've seen is a load of organisations, businesses that I'm really passionate about and the people behind them just coming up and actually not just talking about what they do, but the why behind it and what's taken them to this point. You know, their journey, the things that they've overcome, the stuff that they've learned, and a lot of things that, to be honest, we don't usually get in all those kind of businessy presentations. So um, this will be a bi-monthly event, which will keep on going. Um, and we'll have different people from different walks of life and value-led business, or whatever, is, um, whatever the business model is for getting things done, um, to come and, and share a bit about what they do. So um, yeah, this evening we've had some amazing speakers from Jasmine Kabinski, who runs Change Agents. Uh, we've had Gary Top from Curzon Cinema. Um, and we've also had Rob, um, and Rob runs Rob for the Soul, which is the business we're writing now. Um, and 11% of which was crowdfunded um, and, and, and part of uh, a really interesting biking movement within Bristol. So what we encourage people to do is really share not just um, their business and the usual standard presentations, but talk honestly about the things that they've learned and share that with people. And I think Bristol's really interesting and the West of England is really interesting because we're chock full of amazing people running fascinating businesses and, and creating a business about something they're really passionate about. And I think we've got a great reputation for that, but we do sit back on that a bit. And sometimes it's not easy to find those little businesses which are actually leading that change and really understand how they've got there. And so what we want to do is just really open that up um, and make that as accessible as possible and fun and not just the usual kind of business networking thing where you get your name badge and you pretend to be that businessy person you do in the daytime, but just be yourself and come along. So part of this event has also been about the future of the network and so far we've run for a year we've done some really great things we've done some great market development events brought to get people together from doing a lot of networking and also shared a lot of information which um, you know about opportunities about what's going on in the region which people wouldn't have otherwise had access to and a load of great things has happened as a result but taking this forward um, isn't just so much going to be about me and um, me doing a load of stuff which may or may not be useful for a bunch of people, but actually opening that up, creating a, a wider sense of ownership and inviting a few people to come together and be part of a network group for the next sort of three or four months, meet monthly, speak your mind, turn up and just um, tell us what's useful. And, be, and maybe even if you're motivated, actually be part of um, taking some of that work forward. And so this evening has been that little review about the network, but also that open invitation to a bunch of people to come together. So the next few months is going to be much less about me and what I think is a good idea for a whole sector and loaded businesses, but much more about a wider group of people who are going to be part of forming what's useful and also taking that forward and answering some of the questions that we really need to look at in the next three, four months, which actually, what will the future of the network look like? What we do, which will be really useful for businesses in this region, which will really get things done. And also, what do you want to be part of? What do you want to create? And so, um, the only way that's going to be useful is if you guys are really honest about what's useful and what's not, and come forward and give us some of those ideas, or if you want to be part of it. So, that's the invitation to you guys. Um, if you want to make this a success, get in touch. Our website, of course, is bbsen.org.uk. Our email is bristol.bath.sen at gmail.com. Get in touch with us. Speak, come and speak to me. Be part of taking this forward. And we look forward to doing some really exciting stuff with you. I'm Rob Wall, and I am the manager here at Roll for the Soul, uh, which is Bristol's community bike cafe. Uh, what does that mean? That means we are a and bike workshop and event space and the community part means we are a community interest company so a not-for-profit business uh, one type of social enterprise um, we're very much uh, cycling focused um, so we've just come out of the Bristol and Bath social enterprise networking event which has been a really lovely thing uh, firstly to host and secondly to be involved with um, so we've been having a little chat upstairs with maybe 30 or so people involved in social enterprise in Bristol. Um, real diverse set of businesses and a diverse range of roles amongst those people who are involved in them. So there's people like me who run a social enterprise. There are other people who work in kind of 
uh, grant provision and facilitation, people from the local authority, uh, all sorts of folks, but all with an interest in kind of values-led businesses of one sort or another, basically. Um, and Bristol is a real great place for those type of businesses. I don't know what it is about the city, but I moved here six years ago. It very quickly became apparent to me that it's a place where people get off their asses and make stuff happen, basically. Nobody says, oh, there's no X, Y or Z. They go out and make an X, Y or Z. And that is super inspiring, basically. And that's what inspired me to start this place. Um, and being a social enterprise has been a really important element of what we're doing. You know, I could have set up a for-profit cycle cafe. There are lots of them around the country, very successful. Um, but it felt to me that it would be much harder to engage people and make them feel a stake in the business and make them feel that it was their thing. Um, the experience so far of a year of being open and a year prior to that of getting it set up has really borne that out. We've had so much help from people who wanted to see it happen and have given their both money and more importantly time to literally physically create this place. You know, when we moved in it had to be completely gutted and renovated. We paid some builders to be here for 10 weeks but we had more than 500 hours of help from volunteers doing that stuff and I just don't think that would have happened with a, a normal commercial for-profit business. Um, so we've got Bristol Green Capital coming up next year, there's going to be loads of great stuff going on around a sustainable city, part of that is social enterprise, businesses that are looking beyond just the financial bottom line um, and I really hope that we as a business can be part of Green Capital, particularly around the transport uh, projects that are going on. So come down and visit us, help us be a success, help us uh, make it all happen. Uh, check us out at rollforthesoul.org and we hope to see you soon. Past year, um, what we've been able to achieve, but also talk about some of our thoughts for the future and include you in some of that process as well. Um, so there'll be a bit of me just talking, um, but also I'd, I'd really like to just get a bit of discussion going and, and see what we'd all like to see and see in what way we'd like to get involved in the future. So um, I suppose it's worth Starting from the beginning in terms of why the network started, actually how we raised the money and, and why we thought it was a good idea. Um, so there's a few of us, myself, um, Dirk Groweda, Lane Flint, Carl Belazare, who isn't here this evening, who are part of the Local Enterprise Partnership Social Enterprise Group, um, which we've got quite a lot of strategic chat and not quite a lot of getting things done. And we're also getting a little bit frustrated. Um, it was in the early days of that when there, were, there was the opportunity to bid for core funding without having to match. And so we thought, we have a reasonable idea about what would be useful for a wider social enterprise sector. Let's pitch, let's get some funding, um, and to get some funding to do some of this and deliver. And actually, instead of chatting about what we think is useful, start making it happen. So we got a little bit, some small change from the left. Um, and with that, we decided to plan and develop this social enterprise network. And we're quite conscious that we didn't have all the answers. Um, we know what we think would be useful, but the best way to really get an understanding of how we address needs is to go out and speak to people. So we did quite an involved planning and development phase in the beginning of 2013, which was going out to all the different local authority areas in the west of England, so like Bath, um, North East Somerset, um, Somerset, Bristol, and South Gloss. And each of those areas actually running some kind of focus groups, with not just social enterprises, but all the partners and customers, but people who are all involved in actually making things happen in this space, and, and actually ask them, well, where are some of the gaps? How can we address those? What's needed? And we use that information to really um, inform the program which we're going to be delivering with the network. So we launched the network in um, May of um, 2013 with quite a, a fanfare. Um, at that time, I'd just um, returned from San Francisco, three months in San Francisco, um, and had to step up and do a chat at this big thing. And then we really looked at, well, how are we going to deliver this thing? You know, like we've got to plan this operation. We've said, we've, we've set out and actually been clear around what our offer is to people, um, and we now need to deliver on it. So, you know, at the time, what we felt was really useful, and what seemed to the information that came back to us was social enterprises need, they know how to run their business, but what they really need is access to opportunity, they need access to a market, they need to be connected with potential customers. They also need to be, just have someone who's shouting out for them and saying, look, this is amazing business, we're really passionate about it, they deliver stuff which is probably more cost efficient than other private businesses. Um, but also they need someone who's representative, so on the right kind of tables and is willing to go to some of the more boring meetings, um, which are a proposed some opportunity for all of us, but maybe not all of us need to turn up to. Um, and also supporting growth and collaboration, there's I suppose a lot of offers out there um, which will support social enterprises at different parts of their journey, but do they cover all the bases and how can we fill some of those gaps? 
So what we set out to do, the network, was to start to address some of those gaps. And we had a simple program, some of it was around, some of it was around supporting growth and collaboration, some of it was around just general networking and bringing people together. So over the last year, well, what have we actually, what have we actually done? Um, we set out and thought there's some basic value of just getting people together. So like we're doing now, bringing different businesses together, allowing them to network. So we've done three or four networking events. But also we saw um, a key opportunity in just developing markets. So where social enterprise offers something which no one else can do as well, um, we can convene all sorts of businesses around opportunity, not just social enterprises, but voluntary community sector organisations, maybe it's housing associations, maybe it's some of the funders which are involved in that. So we've done several market development events, and they've been in different themes. So the first one we did was enabling youth for enterprise, working with some of the organisations that are here this evening, and that's bringing those organisations together to say, well look, if you guys all do something good in this area, how do you want to work together to reach for some of those larger funding pots, or to communicate your value to any customers which you can do individually, and then support people to take on some of those outcomes afterwards. We've done one with housing, because we know that affordable housing and social housing is a big gap for that. There's a lot of social enterprises like Comotive or Bright Green Futures who are doing great work in this, but actually how can we help them get access to some of the land they might need or, or just promote their offer to some potential partners. Um, the event we did last Friday, which was really successful and our biggest yet, was all around housing associations and local authorities all wanting to spend more money locally but not knowing how they can do that, not knowing the businesses that maybe they can commission or contract to do that. And so we brought all those different, all the different bits of the jigsaw, the different groups that actually have between them the ability to create that change into one room and said, okay, let's do this. And then we support them again to, to see through some of those outcomes. So, so far, that part of the program has been really successful. But um, some of the other things we've done is just actually fire information to you guys. You know, I mean, when I'm sitting there, the fact that um, I chat to a lot of people or a lot of people email me or I'm out and about at, at, at events where there's free drinks and I have to chat to people means that I do find out about maybe this bit of funding that's there or this bit of news which has changed. And what we do is just aggregate that and share that with people. So hopefully in that we make people's lives a bit easier but also we connect them with some of the opportunities they may not have found themselves. There's a lot of work we've done in terms of just connecting organisations to each other and also where there's someone who's interested in support pro bono or is really interested in partnering with someone, we just broke those kind of links. So there's been quite a lot of ad hoc work around that. And some of this has borne some fruit. So you know, one of the organisations that attended our Enabling Youth for Enterprise went on and applied to Cabinet Office for a 330k grant. I'm successful in that. Now I can't say that I did all that, but we certainly brought them in a room which made them aware of that opportunity and it carried through. And some of the groups that we brought together since that event have come up with a load of other interesting ideas. So at the moment we're talking about a hacker space in South Gloucestershire and maybe putting out a proposal for that which will then raise some funding or, or start to put, uh, I suppose, a new project which the need for that and the potential of that happening through a series of partners, it doesn't happen if you aren't bringing people together in a space and saying, what's possible? What can we do together? What would we like to achieve? I think that's a key part of our role. Um, we've also got Bristol um, branded as a social enterprise city, which um, I always apply a healthy degree of scepticism to, having been part of setting up Green Capital and seeing a lot of strategic chat and a lot of people doing a lot of handshakes and being really proud of the plaque. Um, so what I did is engage 14 different civic stakeholders, that's the council, that's private investors, that's private companies who've got a real interest in making this happen, and then she said, all right guys, if you're really interested in this happening, what are you going to commit to? And so we've got a plan there which covers seven areas from education to finance to assets, and all of that has organisations who've committed to step up to different things. And from that, there's been proposals which have fired out to create a, a code school which will be training young people with code and tech, which we're engaging the LEP with and some of the creative industries about the, some of the ideas for our work with housing associations came from that. So if we aren't convening people, we can't really start to sort of tease out where the sweet spots are to get something done. And also this conversation around um, regional social investment, and I think Bristol has something really, really exciting here which we can use as a test bed. And I think we can show the rest of the country how this city region can connect social enterprises with the resources they need, but also the market. Um, and we're part of the conversation which is looking at how to create a specific social investment fund the Bristol city region, so that's outside of all the London centric stuff, um, and bring new resource into this area and then connect social enterprises with it in a way that actually works for social enterprises and doesn't just work for funders. 
So those are just a few examples. Um, I think one thing we've still got to do is our food event, and um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that um, through one of our emails um, in, in coming weeks. I think um, a key thing that's been about our work, and you certainly see from a range of people speaking this evening, or even a range of people in this room, is that it's not just about social enterprise. Um, if we really want to get things done, it's about the local authority as a customer or a partner, it's about private businesses that have got a lot of skills and experience which will help people start up, maybe just remove some of those barriers to a social enterprise going from a community business that employs three or four people to being something that employs 15 people and starts to be a serious player and knock some of the other competitors out of the market, which you like to see as well. So, um, earlier on this year, I think we've thought about well, what's our future and how are we going to make this thing sustainable? It can't always be voluntary and also it can't always be something which is just hungry for grant funding. <coughs> so far, as I mentioned, we raised some initial sort of small change from the let, and then we topped that up with a bid which Elaine Smith and I did to the big lottery fund, which again brought in a little bit of funding, um, and that provides resource for me a day and a half a week. And then my colleague Will, who's incredibly well dressed this evening, has just had to step out for a phone call um, to work on, on delivering not only our program of events, but also the communications and just being there, really. Um, we had a look at some of the other business models out there. So if we look at all around the country, there's loads of social enterprise networks, and they all kind of have a different flavor of things. We thought, well, how does their business model work? And the short answer is it's not an easy one to run. Um, a lot of these guys, to survive, have aligned to a specific opportunity. So maybe there's one in the Northwest, which is aligned to a social investment fund, makes a lot of its money through selling um, a social impact package, which is about monitoring the impact. Um, on that fund, and so that's how they make their money, and that's how they're able to do some wider work. Or maybe the ones which are just about asking people for membership fees, uh, organisations which have been around for three or four or five years, and maybe cover a lot larger geographical catchment than we do. Um, so they've been around and had a relationship with a load of businesses for a lot longer before they said, hey, can we have 75 quid a year? Um, and those businesses being able to consider that valuable enough to step up, and we're already running really, really lean. So, to bring a, sort of a long journey to, to a short close, we thought this business model was a really tough one to pull off, and certainly for us, we've been around for a year, um, and I'm, I'm not ready to go and start asking large social enterprises for 250, 500 quid a year, or small social enterprises for 75 quid for something which they're not yet sure of the value of. Um, I don't also want to go out and do lots of funding bids and, and start drawing down resource when someone else could be using some of that. Um, the dynamic which we observed over the last year when we had a bit of a session with some of the partners who've been involved in this from the start was actually we've, probably the last six to eight months, we've had a couple of people paid a little bit to run something really lean to do a whole load of work on behalf of a wider sector. And that just being about a small, pe a small group of people doing that doesn't seem to make so much sense. Something which all of the presenters have pointed to this evening in their businesses is actually how they connect with their community. You know, this place being the village hall and the different kind of communities that come together with that. And the network, if it's going to be a network genuinely, and if it's going to go forward on that basis, has got to be really well connected to the different communities that it serves. And part of that, all the guys in this room, part of it is actually some of the local authorities, some of maybe the, the uh, universities which is where some of the housing associations who are becoming increasingly involved in this space. So when we thought about the most sensible way to go forward, we weren't ready to go out and do a sort of commercial arts for people. Um, what we felt was much more sensible is to actually re-engage with the communities that we serve and I suppose create um, a wider sense of ownership around not just what the network's about and everyone kind of being proud of it and saying, hey, you guys are doing a good job, but actually it being something we all consider ourselves part of and also we can have a say in governance and actually what the services that we provide and the programmes <coughs> we do, we can all be part of delivering that um, and part of deciding what it's really about. So um, what we're going to do in the next few months um, and we're going to pair the network down really to some of the basics and the, just the basic things which I think are really valuable which we offer. Um, one of that is giving people information, so firing stuff out, um, making your lives easier in terms of telling you about the latest funding bit that's going on or something that's changed or a new business model which we can learn from through all our emailers. And actually connecting you with what's going on out in the region and not just in Bristol. But also um, bringing people together. We're going to do uh, we're going to do this event monthly, and I hope that you guys really enjoy it. But I found it amazing, um, and I really like just bringing people together, showcasing a few amazing businesses, why they do what they do, 
and then just leaving the space open for people to come together and, and take whatever actions forward, whatever they discuss forward their business in the way that sees fit. Um, I think getting some case studies out there would be really useful. And just, just filing out a bit of basic content which people find really useful. So we're going to keep the website there and that basic presence and we're going to be bringing it together in this way. But over the next um, three to four months, what we want to do is actually have a trial period or a period where we're doing those basic functions but also we're inviting um, a group of people to come together on a monthly basis and actually be part of saying, this is what we'd really like to see. And also on a voluntary basis, because they're interested, they, they want to like, see it happen and because they know that it's value, saying, yeah, I'll be part of helping out with that and have a group of people who are willing to decide some of those things, and then a wider bunch of people are able to come together and actually tell them whether it's useful or not. Um, it's, also, it's all about that kind of dialogue, and um, you know, Jasmine quite rightly pointed out that you, know, you have to chuck yourself into situations and kind of learn about what's needed and learn the skills that you need. Well, um, that's what we want to go back to doing with the network, and I think that that will give us the right kind of foundations from the network going forward, and out of that kind of energy and what's useful, um, we'll emerge what the network can be in the future. There's some opportunities on the horizon. There's some funding applications with um, local universities and maybe a program which could provide some in-kind resource. Um, and Gene may be able to say a little bit about, about some of that. Um, so there's plenty of other ways that we can actually sustain the network resource that the network needs. And I'll be still staying engaged to support the process. But I suppose what I'm really saying is this is an invitation um, to you guys to get involved and be part of not just saying what you'd like to see, but actually doing what you'd like to see happen for the sector. Um, so quite specifically, um, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for a smaller group, which will meet monthly, which will be kind of a network group. Um, maybe it could be a meeting which will proceed an event like this, and it will be fun, but it will also be about, hey, what do we want to do together? Um, and then also just you guys to come along to the next networking meeting to be part of that wider group. But so I'm not shy in saying what's useful and what's not, because if people don't say that, then um, we won't be able to respond to it. So that's just my thoughts on what it is so far. Um, I'm going to put out a couple of questions to you guys, um, and also come and speak to us about getting more involved. Um, I'm going to start with one tricky open question, which is, anyone who's worked with the network so far, um, what's your experience of it been? Has it been useful? There's a few people here I know who certainly don't work with. Anyone happy to say a few words about that? Nick? Absolutely. From my perspective, it's been really useful. Um, obviously, we started working together around the youth-focused event, and that itself was something that, that I was really surprised, I think, at the response of a variety of different organisations that came together. Um, and from my own personal perspective, from my business point of view, it's led on to at least three or four different relationships that have been useful and sustained, that are either there to win work together or that we've worked mutually in, in terms of the ship and being bring the benefit. So, to me, that's the advantage of the network. Like there's, the, there's a bit about having a, you know, a collective voice, and I think that's really important as a sector. But I think that unless there's the, the, the advantage of actually getting something from your input and your involvement, then, then that's a lot less important, certainly for me, for our organisation. Yeah. yeah, thank you. That's really useful. So at the procurement event last week in Bath, um, an event organised by the network looking at specifically uh, bringing together housing associations and local authorities and around housing issues and social enterprise. Um, what I observed and what you heard at that event and the feedback from that event, because I'm, I don't run any social enterprise well. I'm, sorry, I'm interested in the social enterprise world and support it, is um, that, it was a, that the, the people from the local authorities who were there were not the um, leaders or the senior guys from the local authorities giving their rhetoric about, oh yeah, we support social enterprise. They were the managers and the doers and the officers. And they were at the event saying, we want to listen to you. They they listened to the feedback and they said, right, we're going to go away and we're going to do something about it. I think, and a lot of people commented that, that was the first time that opportunity was there. I, I think the opportunities have been there in the past. It's just that that was the first time that people in the local projects were listening with an opening to what the social enterprises wanted. So, and that, so that's a huge thing for the network to achieve. I mean, obviously, see what happens. Mm. But it certainly felt like it was a big step forward. Mm. Yeah, thank you. It's really useful. Anyone else? 
that you know, I mean, for us with School for Social Entrepreneurs, it's, it's been extremely helpful to have that sort of forum where communication can happen. So you know that we can we can tell people about the opportunities that exist through School for Social Entrepreneurs here in the area. It's, it's a very convenient and very good way of reaching reaching people that are interested in that kind of space, people that are keen to hear what's going on. There's also, it's a two-way process, it's also a good way to kind of um, share what's happening and share some of the kind of stories of our, our kind of entrepreneurs on our programs and setting up new businesses. So just in terms of sharing information and being aware of what's happening, it's been really, really valuable. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's good to know. It's good to know. Thanks, everyone. I mean, I, I suppose it's worth recapping on um, after all the research we did, um, sort of thing, what people felt was really going to be useful. And one of the strongest things that came out was like access to opportunity. So, you know, that's either understanding some of the resources out there or just being able to communicate the value of social enterprise to potential partners and customers and what they delivered, which no one else could, which is something I'm really passionate about. Um, but also supporting social impact and supporting organisations to understand the impact that they had, um, the communities they connect with, but also just supporting you know, growth and collaboration. I mean, I know that it's probably a moment four or five um, active social enterprise support programmes which you could apply for in this area. And would you know that if you were coming into this and maybe you haven't spent 13 years living and working in Bristol like I have? Probably not. Um, so it's, it's just making people aware of what's out there. But um, out of those things that I just described, I just wanted to put it out there. Does that still seem relevant? You know, and, and what do you guys see as some of the greatest need out there? We've had a few, covered, a few of those things covered by our presenters, but is there anything out there which you guys can see as needed, which could be a quick win or something, an opportunity for us to support people? A lot of satisfying customers. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing a good job? Um, I mean, from a personal perspective, you know, I've been to this, it's good, you know, I think it needs to be funky, dynamic, quick networking, you know, not long, you know, presentations, an opportunity to socialise, that's great. I think the market development workshops, the one I went to last week was really good, sounds like you, other people have had really good at, um, experience for that. And then, you know, the fact is there is a website and there is a, you know, um, digital communications exercise, you've got Twitter feed, haven't you, and, you know, and that needs to continue as a sort of uh, digital voice for the, for, the, for the network. And, you know, those three things feel like they're right at the core of, of your sort of tools for reaching out uh, and communicating. And, you know, I don't know how much more you need to do than that and continue mm -hmm. doing that and mm -hmm. do a really good job on those three things. Yeah, so that would be, yeah, we're, we're on that right now. I don't think there's anything new to be done. Just do those things better. And, and, you know, and you know, this this event feels like it could be twice the size, you know? Um, yeah. And, and it'd be really good next time for us all to sort of, you know, say what well, a great, great friend. friend, bang the drum, yeah, bring yeah. a friend, yeah, bring a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should find out your I don't have many friends, but. That's <laughs> <laughs> one or two, most of them. Oh, wait, but I don't know, I mean, probably from that point, the size matters, but actually also longevity matters too. So a year in, and the fourth or fifth event, maybe it's here, that I've been to, I'm still seeing new faces, and it's still going. So actually, sticking it out and running these things inevitably is going to grow bigger, and inevitably you're going to reach new people and diverse people. And I think that's really, really lacking in so many sectors that are so siloed, like with the social enterprise sector, so let's have all the same faces doing all the same things and talk about all the same things. Um, so it's really cool that you've actually committed to saying, right, we want to get different voices in the same space. Um, and yeah, that will inevitably happen when you've got beer in a room and yeah. you're in a <laughs> space, you know, it's just you bring, you bring people that you like and you want to meet. So yeah. Um, Keep going, longevity, diversity, proud. That's a small point for me. I don't think monthly events are a good idea. I think bi monthly. I think monthly is just too frequent. You'll have trouble organising it and people get bored. So just what do you think? Word of caution. What do you reckon? 
Five months. 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 So Social Enterprise Works have you know, applied for and got some funding for the lottery to, uh, to put on these events that you've been attending so far. Um, we've recently partnered up with the University of Bristol and the University of West of England um, and we've just received further funding now to be able to put on another four events across the next year through the network, which will be promoted through the network. We've also um, secured some funding for, for a graduate placement for the year and um, part of their role will be to improve the online version of the network because at the moment mm. there are certain issues about the group site, like not only is it quite expensive but it doesn't actually always do what we'd like it to do and encourage the kind of activity we would like to get online. Mm. So um, one of the main <laughs> things about the funding that we've just got from Unlimited will be Partly, it will be bringing in a new partner, and one of the key aims of setting up this network was to start to bring the different mm. groups together. That it wasn't a social enterprise silo, as it were, but it was sort of marketplace for bringing people together, an opportunity to create and innovate and work together uh, for, the, for the greater good, as it were. So um, I think what this um, bit of funding will do now is allow us to work more closely with the universities who have you know, a rich um, tapestry of different areas that they can share with us, their research communities, the students that are coming through who are very interested in social enterprise and entrepreneurial activity, as, w as well as looking at the sort of technical sides. So also as part of this, we'll sort of probably have sort of a future cafe to look at how can technology help to enable the ecosystem of support for social entrepreneurs and social enterprises throughout Bristol and the west of England, which I'm sure is something that, that you know, the initial funding that we had from the west of England, MEP, was looking towards how do we do this, how do we make the west of England a strong, connected ecosystem to mm. enable this kind of stuff to come up and, and really make a difference in, in our mm. region. So it's quite exciting that we have managed to, mm. to now sort of secure um, further funding for the next year to keep the events going, because of course there is a cost to doing these things, you know, as you've mentioned, mm. your time, but also sort of running the events and so on. Yes. So, um, so, so that's great news, but also it'll give us an opportunity to talk more about how we can make this a sustainable network, you know, mm. whether or not we do sort of pay something each year towards it or, or each event or something like that, but, uh, you know, eventually we need to find ways, don't we, of making it mm. sustainable, and we want everybody's help in doing that. So I think one thing that, that what Daniel was sort of saying is from now we'd like to sort of see a way and um, any volunteers who would like to come forward and be part of maybe a larger group, um, a sort of board group or assembly group that can, can actually help us figure out the way that this can go forward in the long term to become a sustainable business and to support yes. the activity in the West of England. Oh, yeah, no, thank you, and thanks for giving a bit more information yeah. about you know, the good news in terms of future support. But yeah, it's really important to underscore is like so far, you know, I've been working like a day and a half a week on this, and, and Will's been working at a day a week on this, and, and before that, um, you know, my colleague Catherine. And you know, we've achieved a huge amount with really small amounts of resource, but yeah, from this point onwards, I'm going to be stepping down the amount of time commitment I give this. The dynamic is going to change. Um, it won't just, just be about me holding a to do list. Um, what I'm keen to be in the future is one of, you know, not just a few voices who are defining how the network goes forward, but actually one of a group of voices, and actually my influence in it being far less um, than it has been to date. And so what I'm, my aim is in stepping back to actually see who else steps forward. Um, and yeah, I'll be reducing the amount of time I'm spending, I'll be keeping our website up to date, but also um, this isn't a business I'll be doing in, or, or a project which I'll be doing in perpetuity. You know, I, I work on um, quite a few other different projects and businesses in terms of support. I'm part of a, a partnership of experts and social entrepreneurs <coughs> assembly, and that's very much going to be more of my kind of focus. And you know, we're, we're working with housing associations, we work with universities, with private investors, with a whole range of different people. Um, but I, what's clear to me after being part of this for a year is that there's a lot of support for this, but also there's a real kind of business need for it. And I'm really passionate about 
seeing this region um, really step up in terms of not just the marketing job in terms of our wonderful kind of Bristol reputation that the city does seem to sort of kick back and chill out on quite a bit, but actually really sort of fulfilling that, really stepping up and showing we can create more and more businesses like Rolf and the Soul, you know, like Curzon, like you know, Rio, like so many amazing people that are based here, but also we're taking it to other regions. And it's not just something that we all do because we like it, we kind of accept a little bit of a lower wage, but we're able to really create more scalable businesses doing this. And that needs work. Um, and it ain't just going to be all about me, it's going to be about the crew of people. So I'm, I'm looking for that crew, um, and I hope tonight will be one of those starting points. So um, thanks everyone for coming. Um, but also, for your platform things. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, just as an expression of interest, we'll follow up. Um, I don't need to stand by the door because I know your commitment is far greater than that. Maybe just to add that Daniel, it's kind of also about shaping, yeah. shaping this network in the future to make things happen, be part of that. Yeah. It was quite exciting. I mean, you know, we've enjoyed the last year of just being yeah. part of that group of getting us to where we are. And it's been good crack. We've got stuff done. in there and <laughs> take things forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is not an ever-ending commitment forever and ever. It's just actually being part of the sort of next few months and actually with us answering some of the questions around what the future of the network looks like, where the real need is, and actually what sort of stuff do we want to get done together which we'll really enjoy and make stuff happen. But maybe so. just to be clear in terms of time commitment, we're not looking for someone to replace you and doing no. a day or week. But it's kind yeah. of, it's of being part of sort of at least a regular monthly meeting and you know, maybe doing some jobs, taking on something in between to make things happen according to the time you have. It's kind of, yeah. you know, it's not trying to replace what you're doing, but it's adding that sort of carrying, carrying, yeah. caring, carrying it's network. It's like a trustee role, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, it's, but it's not a formal role. Yeah, it's yeah, much yeah, more about right. doing thinking stuff. role. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bring your, bring your thoughts and bring your passion, really. I think that's... that's Turn it once a month, say what you Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, who'd be up for being part of that? Mick, Will, Kirsten, Guinness. Wow, that's brilliant. It's very wonderful. Yay! Yeah. 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 Any others I missed out? So we got Nick, Will, Kirsten. So your name at Batman? Dan Newton. Dan Newton. Nick, Will, Kirsten, Jamin. Pam, Holly. <laughs> I'm blinded by the light. Yeah. <laughs> I want to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got Nick, Will, Kirsten, Jasmine, Dan, Newton, Pam, Kyle. Anyone I've missed? <laughs> You're going somewhere really nice. Right? <laughs> You're welcome to come off away every time you have a break. Um, and first I'd like, yeah, big hands for everyone who stepped up. Um, big thanks for getting this first monthly, or well, bi-monthly, um, <laughs> quarterly, <laughs> to be decided by the group when they meet in about a month's time, um, the frequency of the um, group. Yeah, just thanks so much for getting this off to a bank, because I'm, I'm just really passionate about us coming together and sharing things in a much more personal, fun way than the usual business stuff, because there's enough of that in the world. So thank you.